Hey guys, welcome back to why I'm a 40k rogue trader. Uh, I've put some of the gear, well, put some of the, yeah, the inventory stuff into cargo. There's still some of these weapons that I want to hang on to and armors that I'll hold on to for now. And I did do the level ups, so let's take a look at those. Uh, with Stooge, I went agility and awareness. Simple. Uh, with Iliot, I went Lorzenos and agility. Pascal got tech use and ballistic skill. Abelard got athletics and strength. Cassia got perception and law warp. And Jay got willpower and persuasion. So no skills or anything, just some stat upgrades. And let's Okay. Alright, let's go to the shop. Uh I think the item I want is Deadly Repeater. So I want to pick this up as soon as possible because it's a massive damage upgrade for Stooge. So I think we'll focus on getting Explorators up. So let's do that. 9,850. Is that enough? I don't actually know how much it'll take to... Wait. Why is it not working anymore? Okay. Okay. Plasma pistol. Portative manipulator. Large medkit and precise las gun. Uh, it's not really better. But we can just have it in the... In the inventory. It looks like it's going to take a long time to get to... To the deadly repeater. Not sure if we'll be able to get to it this... Uh, in this chapter. But I think that'll be our focus. Let's go from uh, newest to oldest. So... I think I want less uh, reload. Precise las gun. Oh, she can't use precise las gun, so that's fine. Plasma rifle, plasma gun, okay. And I think, I don't think there's really anything else here. Leather armor, I think that can go to cargo, actually. That's pretty decent, but I think that's good enough. That's what we, we've got there. Let's just check colony management for a sec. Ah, oh, still executing this one. Okay. And I think we can just go back to the Coronas Expanse map and let's continue searching for Kiava Gamma. Okay, let's chart new routes. Hmm, hmm. okay, so... That doesn't take us anywhere near, well, that doesn't show any new routes, so let's go back to Telecos Epsilon. The officers on one of the lower decks stopped providing status reports. Three days had passed since the Vox system broadcasted anything other than subdued moans and wet slapping noises. An enforcer squad sent to investigate reported that the denizens of the lower levels had regressed to animals and succumbed to depravity. Connection with the squad was shortly lost. The high missionary of the Adeptus Ministorum became flushed with fury and condemned these as designs of the arch enemy. 
the hotbed of heresy was cleansed with fire and bread. Okay, six damage to the ship. By the God Emperor's grace, no perils of the warp prevented the vessel from re returning to real space. Okay. Uh, I think it's time to explore some of these minor, more minor, um, systems. There was a malfunction in the engineering chamber during the warp journey. The accelerator cogitator stopped obeying the tech priest and for a few precious moments, the ancient machines were left to their own devices. The crew managed to avoid serious breakdowns or accidents. Several acolytes of the cult mechanicus were turned into servitors as penance, and the bosun gave out several triple watches to the voidsmen who dredged up the old rumors about the cursed ship. All right. I think at some point we will chart a course from Telikos Epsilon directly to Furibundus. Oh, we have 16 navigators in sight now. That's interesting. Let's go to Omicron. Okay, nothing. No event. Okay. So only one path, let's visit. Space dust, let's go to this planet first. The magnetic storm raging above the planet blurs the gaze of Orga arrays. Only true, po truly powerful diviner machines may see through the currents of magnetic fluctuations in their blessed vigil and discover the mysteries of this emperor forsaken planet. Uh, the rogue trader has decided to leave this un unwelcoming world. Maybe it will return here one day. Well, okay. Seems like that's nothing there. Well, nothing that we can do anyway. More plasteel. Yeah, I think I'll skip the extraction of plasteel for now. Don't quite need it just yet. The ruins of an ancient imperial city were discovered on a dead world completely deprived of an ecosystem. According to the reports, the entire, entire settlement is contained in a titanic glass dome that once held an artificial atmosphere. Your augurs detected the framework of three other similar structures that were never completed. For whatever reason, the dome systems failed and left behind is this city, ghosts that minute, never managed to become a proper colony of the Imperium. Hmm. Send out a crew to explore the city's temple district. Holy gifts, okay. Temple district is situated at the heart of the city. The God Emperor's statue, intricately carved from precious crystal, is suspended beneath the dome, supported by chains of gold, and can be seen from anywhere in the colony. Inspired by the majestic sight, the expedition members set off to explore the area with renewed vigor. Soon enough, they stumbled upon an ancient weapon lying on a pedestal wreathed in sunlight. The expedition brought it back to the ship and told many tales about how the Emperor himself, who had been watching them from above, had directed their attention to the sacred relic. Interesting. Blessed Bolter casing. Okay. Explore the local palace. A lavishly decorated estate of the local ruler towers over rows of featureless bunkhouses. Several explorers perished from the cleverly hidden tripwires in the courtyard, but after losing their companions, the team easily disarmed the remaining traps in the estate. Anything of value has been promptly delivered to the rogue trader's vessel. The Lord Captain was even given a, an exquisite sword found in a secret cache that once belonged to the mansion's owner. Ghost Sword and Profit Factor 1. Okay. Order the scouts to gather as many supplies as possible. Provisions, Mechanicus Creations, Range Weaponry, Uniform Kit. Okay. 
Your people flooded the city like a tidal wave, filled building after building, bunkhouse after bunkhouse, and receded from its quiet street just as quickly. There were plentiful of plenty of, of useful things among their findings, including foodstuffs and weapons. Okay? Drain the remaining fuel from the generator station. City won't need them anymore. 120, okay. Take several trips to deliver the massive Promethean storage tanks to your vessel. The crew grimly points out that the colony was running out of fuel. Had the life support systems not failed prematurely, the locals would still have perished due to lack of energy. Alright. Unfortunate for them. Check out, well, save it first, and then let's check out the space dust. More fuel. Okay. Right, system speculo then. Here we go. Colony Dargonus has begun a new stage of development. Okay, well then. Cure for sloth. Efficiency. Okay. Capella Biologists. Allies deal 5% more damage to Xenos. Ooh, need 35.8k reputation with Kasbalika. Uh, reputation with Explorators. Chirurgeon Med Kit. Profit Factor 1. 3 Chemicals. Profit Factor 1. 2 Xenotech. Profit Factor greater than 35. 3 precision Provisions. And we get these. Contract available. Okay. Lord Captain, we have received a report from Dargonus. Some common folk from the now ruined Scipione 84249 have succumbed to the heresy of defiance. Forming into engine vandal gangs, they now ride among the wasteland on the wasteland adapted cleaning Goliaths. They have declared themselves outside of the law, raiding the hive's outskirts only to escape retribution in the toxic wastelands. Many of them did not want to obey your more than equitable decision to send them to the restoration site of Scipione, and thus they have fled the labor settlements committing her the heresy of disobedience. Rumor has it that the brigadier clan in charge of debris removal in the ruins of Scipione keep in contact. We could pass on your words to the renegades via the brigadiers or force them to disclose the locations of the rebels' nomadic camps. What is this brigadier clan? This is a union of the workers and the technomats who have been working on the lower levels of Scipione. Uh, small scale bosses of the watchers and the shifts, useful common folk who have proved their worth with diligent labor and valuable knowledge. Of course, they stand much lower than the esteemed trader, let alone the aristocrats, but the common folk heed their kin and the brigadiers have both the authority and ability to manage them. The Scipians keep to themselves, but the Brigadiers have not shown any signs of disloyalty. They were the first to volunteer to return to the ruins of Scipione uh, 84249 and set up the debris removal project. They are certainly useful and are accustomed to praising the Emperor through their labour. Moreover, their grief at the loss of their home and the resilience with which they have accepted it made them to appear like heroes and martyrs in the eyes of the other commoners. How do they survive in the wastelands and why do they decline my rule? This is a rather uncomfortable way of life, your lordship. They must always be wary of acid rain and hurricanes, moving a decent distance from the hives if they do not plan on raiding at that moment. They get their food from abandoned outposts, paying for it with the lives of those killed by autonomous security systems. Water and Promethium are rationed very strictly. They live by marauding an occasional hunt and plundering, sometimes their own kin and sometimes the outskirts of the hive. They are a tribe of degenerates and barbarians that is rapidly developing into its own clan culture. The civilized residents of the hive shoot the scum any chance they get. Okay. Wish to hear what my advisors have to say? 
If the engine vandals have managed to tame the ancient machine spirits, then that means there are technomats or even tech priests among their ranks. That renders them negotiable. It would be efficient to utilize such renegades instead of disposing of them. A promise of reward for every piece of technology found in the wastelands of Dargonus and re returned back to Dynasty will ensure their obedience and tractability. If you wish to exterminate, exterminate them, uh, Elantark, do not waste your time on hunting them down. Instead, deceive them into defeating each other with a prize, a weapon, or a trophy that they can fight for. After the monkey are uh, finished slicing each other up for the right to obtain it, your warriors shall finish the deed. This tactic proves itself to be very useful against your kind. Uh, thanks for sharing the, the Eldari tactics of exterminating humans. The aristocrats of Dargonus despise them, but are also secretly afraid of them, correct? Renegades can that can invoke such fear. I wonder if I had exiles like this on my home. Would they have curbed the ambitions of my brothers and sisters? Would they have supported me in case of conflict? Oh, I'm scheming and conspiring right now, am I not? Bravo, Lady Cassia. Do not be ashamed of the unique abilities bestowed upon you by a heritage. They are your birthright. Okay, let's see. Uh, mechanism times one, minus one profit factor. Wasteland generator. This ancient component of a Dargonus fleet frigate was discovered in the waste by the engine vandals and presented to the road trader. Torpedo tubes capable of firing five short burning plasma torpedoes with 19 damaged warheads. Hmm. Okay. Interesting. I'm not really a fan of the torpedoes, but. It could be useful. Security, leader of the engine vandals. Road trade against one movement point. That's pretty good, actually. Complacency plus one. Wasteland twister. Hmm. Okay, so it's a two-handed power greatsword, I guess. Very interesting. Hmm. We lose profit factor. Get the wasteland generator. Let's go with Lady Cassia. I'm still naive of even the basics in these games played by powerful but ancient. But my intuition tells me that this is a winning strategy. A meeting with the leaders of the engine vandals was organized via the Brigadier clan. They have gladly accepted your proposal to serve. Having received weapons and information, the engine vandals slaughtered several brash and troublesome aristocrats in a few successful raids, sowing fear and reliance on the road traders' protection. The roar of their engines was like snapping a whip over their heads of frightened cattle. Okay. Two efficiency, no complacency, one security. Profits for water. Frag grenade, efficiency, a lot of efficiency, and mechanisms. Uh, so it blocks Season of Wars and Adeptus Arbites. I think that's how you pronounce it anyway. Boots of Victory. Whenever the wearer performs a heroic act, they recover all their wounds and gain two AP. That sounds like a really good item. Shield of the Emperor. 5,000 Imperial Navy. 5,000 Imperial Navy. Three weapons, three adamantine, three security. Uh, all allies gain 5% melee damage and plus 20% damage to their attacks of opportunity. Okay. And this one must have the filth of the expanse which I can't do anymore. Fellowship of the Void. Nine people. Three weapons, okay. I think this one's the best one. The boots seem pretty good, actually, so... Let's go with that. Warp Guides. Security plus two. 
Chronicle of the Protectorate. Overseers coerced the convicts' leaders into dealing with their underlings. The leaders ordered a massacre. The rogue trader ordered to have the disobedient convicts lobotomized. Okay. Test of wills. Two security for all colonies. And we get six people. Uh, Lord Captain's void ship gains unerring shots feature. Torpedoes deal 15% more damage. Okay. Uh, ergonomics. Okay, so it needs ergonomics or Envirodome. This one needs the Envirodome. Profit factor plus four. Okay, complacency one for all colonies. Chain great act. Well, that's not happening anymore. Superior munitions. All allies gain plus five ballistic skill and plus five damage to their ranged attack. Hmm, okay, that's pretty good. We get four Promethium, four chemicals. Torpedoes deal more damage. Security for all colonies, six people. I think for now we'll do the killing fields. I don't know, I actually don't know if these are the best options or not, but... We're going with them. Okay, let's save it here. We will chart new routes, see what we find. Not much. Literally nothing other than a very dangerous route to Ocelio Prophecy. Emperor's Palm. Okay. Well, let's visit. Unknown ships. Hmm. A bit nervous, but I'm also... In Excited to try out the new uh, prowl weapon that we have. Okay, Xenotech. Augur's Anomaly. Uh, let's not go there just yet. Scan these other planets and maybe take the ships, unknown ships. Adamantine. We've only got one extractium left. Hmm. Okay. Uniform kit. Okay, well, let's save it here and let's check out the ships. Hang on. Nope. Let's see, Mars Pattern Macro Battery, Riser Pattern Plasma Battery, yep. Okay. Uh, let's repair the hull. Save it here, and let's hit these unknown ships. A report shows up on your personal cogitator screen. Unknown ships are towing the interstellar sextant. Cargo ship belonging to one of Footfall's wealthiest traders. It looks like the pirates have bitten off more than they can chew and have now been forced to drag the ship to a more secluded place where they can plunder it undisturbed. Attacking the pirates, baby. As soon as they see you, the escort ships charge into battle at once, while the captive sextant powers up its warp engines. Unless you interrupt the preparation for the jump, the cargo ship will forever vanish beyond the veil of the Immaterium along with all the riches it's carrying. Yep, don't let it get away. I lift up my voice in prayer for this vessel and its hallowed guns. Okay. Hmm, decent range. Interstellar Sextant. Oh, this is our helper frigate that we got, I think. Nice. Let's try and destroy this. This is the Interstellar Sextant. 
Okay. I don't think I want to destroy it, do I? Guess we'll find out. Actually hit it. Nice. Okay. So let's do this. Okay. I don't actually know if we do want to hit the intercell sextant. Oh, I can't. Now we're out of reach of all of them. Okay. Fair enough. Uh, how about we scoot here? Took out two ships. They're not very. I guess this is an sort of uh, this particular planet was quite. Oh, I think we do have to destroy it. Uh, but I think this planet is actually one that you probably encounter quite early in the game with respect to um, with respect to um, how quickly you well it's one of the planets that you encounter right at the start when you first uh engage with the combat mechanic void ship combat mechanic so yeah oh we can turn it around okay so it should be relatively easy I think in theory anyway See how far we can go with. Because this guy is going to get away, I think. Hmm. Let's go all the way up here. Because I don't really have any other option, to be honest. Oh, can't hit it. That's not good. Okay. wonder if it's getting away. That would suck. Mm. One more turn.
Damn it. Shift to the side there. Okay. Mm -hmm. We surrender. Okay, nice. That's perfect. Alright. Oh, okay. We have to reach one of the end cells. Fair enough. Oh, is that shit? So we've got Mazoa macro cannons, short range dorsal macro cannons which fire two shots, dealing 14 damage per shot. Dorsal macro cannons, medium range dorsal lance weapon. Okay. I guess that one is actually probably better. Uh, okay. Upgrade. Alright, so Mazoa Macro Cannon Starbreaker Lance Weapon. Also, Macro Cannons were okay. Let's try out the Dorsal Lance Weapon though. Does 32 to 40 damage, which is more than this, be 28 damage max. Didn't lose much in the way of. Hull. Okay. We've got swing run, torpedo control, shield pulse, uh, shallow warp jump in a forward direction. Focus effort. Allows the use of both abilities of one selected post. Okay. New heading. Reinforced shields. Vulnerability scan. Flagships augers scan an enemy ship to highlight its weak points. Okay, let's get that. And ultimate post abilities. Wow, okay. Uh let's see. Were there more? No, they weren't. Okay. So it's these ones up here. Corpuscari chant. At the end of each turn, the most Damage sector of the flagship shield restores up to 50% of its strength, plus one round for every 10 points in the post officer's tech use skill. Hmm, okay, so we don't have reinforced shields or shield pulse, so we can't do that. All hands on deck. Flagship's torpedo tubes are loaded with three torpedo salvos instead of one. Okay. 
Emparian Storm. Flagship makes seven attacks, each of which targets a random enemy in an eight cell range and deals eight to 14 warp damage. Can be used only once per round. Plus one round for every 10 points in the post officer's law warp skill. Premonition, the flagship's augurs scan the area for favorable tactical positions. While the flagship is in such a position, its evasion is increased by 35%, okay? Until the end of combat, the flagship speed is increased by two and its maneuverability is increased by plus one. The bonus damage dealt by void ship ram based on the distance traveled is increased by 100%. Boarding party. The flagship launches a boarding party to infiltrate an enemy ship, starting internal fires and possibly causing engine damage that cripples the ship for one round. Interesting. Let's do Empyrean Storm. That sounds the most interesting. Okay. Uh, ultimate. Your ship now has access to an ultimate ability. It can drastically change the tide of battle. Try using your ultimate ability and see for yourself. Note that you can only use one ultimate ability per combat. Yep. Ultimate abilities are so powerful that they take significantly longer time to recharge. When using ultimate abilities, be aware that they may still be on cooldown the next time you enter battle. Oh, the cooldown transfers to the next battle too, if it's too close together. The ship's ultimate cooldown bar gradually fills up on each of your flagship's turns in combat. At the end of each battle and as a result of certain events during sp space exploration. Okay, interesting. Ah... Uh, yeah, so that's Empyrean Storm. That's pretty cool. Okay. Well then, save it here. And let's go to the jungle world. Let's head to the Augur's Anomaly. Yep. You visited half of the optional location. Okay. Got an achievement for visiting half the optional locations. Servitor, some goods. Okay. I walk the path less traveled. You do not have to hide the ashy shadows of loneliness behind swirls of bright colors, Ulfa. Wait, what? You do not have to hide the ashy shadows of loneliness behind swirls of bright colors all far. Don't think we have all far yet. I, I did it. The barely noticeable words in shaky handwriting touch the darkness, and the darkness will accept you. Okay. I follow my own path. Darkness swirls beneath your feet, a void of impenetrable gloom. You do not hear a single sound from the depths of the pit. No wailing wind, no rustle of dust. Examine the pit. The bright daylight cannot pierce the darkness lying over the slopes. The longer you look into its depths, the stronger the feeling grows that this darkness isn't just an absence of light. It is something immeasurably vast, endless, capable of reaching the farthest stars or swallowing a galaxy. Through sheer force of will, you avert your gaze. All right, let's step back from the pit. Hmm. Okay, it's just some cargo. Numerous ropes and cables end abruptly at the very edge of the pit, vanishing into the gathering darkness. Okay. Goods. And another rusty cogitator. Okay. My Orspex has detected something. Rudimentary tools and devices are now covered in a layer of dirt and local flora. Okay. Why? 
Haven't I studied hard enough? Pet use. Awareness test succeeded. The surface bears the marks of determined and protracted effort. Someone made dozens of scratches which chaotically intersect at different angles without any order or logic. Hmm. Save it here. I wander through the stars. Okay. Uh, lean over and stretch your hand into the darkness. This is probably not a good idea. At the edge of your consciousness, you sense something slimy and intangible answering your invitation for contact. It seeps into your thoughts, tasting your emotions. Surprise and curiosity envelop, envelop you, but these feelings are not your own. Hmm. Well, I don't know what it is, and this might be something for a heretical playthrough. So, but since we're playing Iconoclast, let's just step away, if we can. <laughs> Each step takes a tremendous effort. It feels as if you are being smothered from the inside, grinding your very being to dust to the point where your heart just might jump out of your chest. But you stubbornly continue walking until the alien thoughts release you and the illusion immediately falls away. Okay, well. Black impenetrable darkness carries on with its silent existence. Every day, a new opportunity. Alright. Well then. Nothing else is here, so I guess we're going back out. Okay, so let's continue our our search for Kiava Gamma. Okay. Do I want to chart a course to Frozen Prince? We have 18. Let's do it. Make it unsafe. Save it, and then let's warp travel. That night, the Lord Captain and some of his crew were awakened by beautiful music. The sound seemed to caress their very minds until they realized that the source was their own bodies. While their teeth were chattering out a staccato, the tendons were being plucked up like strings by unseen hands and invisible breath. It flowed through their bones, turning them into mournful flute. The illusion ended, but for a long time afterward, every movement made their heart stutter in fear. Was the orchestra about to strike up once more? Okay, chart your roots. There's Tenebris Aqua. Prana. Oh, that is a long way away. All right, well. We've at least found Prana, so that's good. All right, everything looks reasonably okay. There's no pirate ships, there's no whatever. So just planets, so we'll see what planets have in store for us. Ice world, Prometheum. Five Prometheum is quite a lot. I don't want to explore that place just yet. Bastille, don't want that. Nothing on this planet. What about this one? More plasteel. 
Uh, no thanks. Let's go to the ice world. And we might go down into the... Whatever the hell this is, but let's save it first. Yep, that's fine. Okay, we're setting up... We're encountering a trap straight away. That's quite interesting. Okay, Medicaid. Headless body. Nothing definite can be said about it. Okay. Another trap. Well, that's not good. Fresh injury. Am I really the one with the highest demolition? 65, 40, 35, 50, 30, 55. Apparently I am. That's interesting. Well, Abelard can Let's patch you up. heal that injury. Okay. Uh, oldest to newest. Uh, let's go back to newest to oldest. Single attacks with bolter weapons automatically hit the target. Okay, very interesting. Uh, Eldari weapon proficiency. Ghost sword. Wanderer's Portent. Okay. Dead Eye Shot. Eldari Long Rifle. 18 to 21. Laser weapons are effective against targets in cover and targets with high dodge. This rifle can only perform Dead Eye Shot attacks whenever the wielder scores a with a single shot attack, they gain an additional, additional attack this turn. Okay, that's pretty good actually. Uh, now let's see. Fragment of ship plating bearing unholy symbols. It seems the vessel was shot over the planet as some of the debris reached the surface. Okay. Demolition. Oh, okay. Another one. Oh, we only have 20%? Jeez, okay. That's nasty. Although we rolled a 99, so I don't think we were ever going <laughs> to succeed that one, you unfortunately. Let's get rid of that injury. And weigh every step. Sometimes, though, save you just it here. Fire your biggest cannon and save the day. If it pleases you, Sherin. Ooh, okay a lot chaos marine hmm okay well uh not sure how long this fight's gonna take so and this looks cool this looks like a i'm not a big guard imperial guard fan so i'm not exactly sure but it looks like a lehman rust demolisher Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. I'm always keen to to um, uh, learn a bit more about the actual 40k law. So if you actually know exactly what tank this is, let me know. But I think this is a good place to stop. And in the next episode, we'll try and tackle this Chaos Marine and any of his buddies. So... That's something to look forward to. Uh, we finally found uh, well, Kranach, so we know where Kiava Gamma is, so that's good. And we've also found Tenebris Aqua, so we can try to hopefully this time save the Eldari there. But we'll see how we go once we've cleared out this planet. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next episode.